Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Light Zone Data Show. My name is George Rieke, and I'm here with Peter O'Connor. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about Eagle Eye Search. All right. Well, nice to meet you, George. Nice to meet um, you as well. Yeah, so I'm the CEO of Eagle Eyes. We uh, started about two years ago, and our initial sole objective is just to help search and rescue teams who are using drones to make the rescue mm -hmm. and uh, allow the drones to kind of interact efficiently with the rest yeah. of the search team. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine so much more efficient, right, just to uh, offer the AI capabilities and trying to identify all these different objects, humans, I guess maybe even wildlife, you can monitor different trajectories and stuff. But anyways, that's kind of out of scope, right, of, uh, of your service. Well, yeah, we've, you never know. we've kind of identified two areas in which, um, in which we can really make a big difference. So one is the computer vision aspect of it. Typically, a drone operator will be looking down, and it'll just be a sea of forest, and it's really hard to spot stuff. Right. So we have a computer vision system that just points out little anomalies to the operator to help them see it. Um, so that is in real time. It's not getting the footage back to the lab, so to speak, and trying to identify it. It's we do both. So yeah. we try to focus as much as possible on doing it in real time because that's when it really matters. And yeah. it just alleviates so much of the burden that has historically been done with swapping SD cards around and things that you shouldn't really be doing on a live mm -hmm. operation. Right. Yeah. I would imagine. I would imagine. And so right now, is it uh, any type of terrain that you would be able to navigate over? Is it mainly focused on uh, your model being trained in the forest and um, or anywhere would work? Yeah. So the somewhat surprising thing is our model is not trained at all. Um, it is just looking at each new image afresh. So everyone expects it to be some kind of deep learning thing yeah. that trained on millions and millions of images. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that fairly simple statistical anomaly detection is, from what we've seen so far, a more effective approach than all this training. Other people have tried this training and what often happens is the model will fit to a certain environment, you get into a new environment, and it doesn't work. And right. search, the thing in search and rescue is there's things never look like a person mm -hmm. uh, from the air. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very hard to just make a model of what you're looking for. So right. this anomaly detection approach is what we've picked, at least for now, um, as the way we're going through this. Very yeah. interesting. So it's basically detecting something that seems out of place, that it's not uh, confirmed to the patterns, that otherwise it's identifying its surrounding areas, and it's giving a bleep, and it's like, hey, maybe take a look at this. That's the idea. And what's interesting is that kind of idea that came from talking to people who fly the drones and asking them just what's going through your head when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. And they kind of report, I don't know, I'm just looking for something that looks like it doesn't belong. And so that's yeah. kind of what the algorithm is doing as well. It's very interesting. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you then have a fleet of drones? Do you, is it like one at a time? Or what would be the best deployment case for them? Um, we kind of leave deployment to the team. So we try to stay in the focus of like, okay, what do we do with the footage when we're receiving it? Different situations call for different things. So you'll often have teams flying multiple drones at the same time, cut up onto different sectors. Yeah. Some team, typically teams will just have one drone that they're sending up at a time. So it, it very much yeah. depends on the case and we try to kind of leave that up to the team who's right. doing the search, right. yeah. But I mean, regardless, it's uh, aiding and helping those lives. I know the tourism industry is booming in BC. We see more and more hikers. Unfortunately, a lot of inexperienced hikers going on harder trails. And unfortunately, we do hear about this in the news more and more. So I think this is very timely and i um, looking forward to uh, seeing it in action. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you as well.